The next concept I want to talk about is about the clarity of language. So how you explain the meanings of words will in large part determine how easy it is for the baby to learn the word. So the baby could either learn the word very rapidly. If you, for instance, were teaching the word cup and you showed 20 different cups and then each time you said cup, this is a red cup, this is a blue cup, this cup is made out of plastic, this is a paper cup, and so on. Then the child can learn the word cup after a very short amount of time. Parents don't typically do that, so it can take the baby a very long time to learn words because parents are mostly talking in sentences and then the baby has to figure out what they're talking about. It's like if I were speaking Chinese or Japanese or French or some language that you may not understand, it would take you a very long time to figure out what the words meant. So try to help your baby learn by uh, teaching your babies in a very clear way. There's research showing that the clarity of the language that the parents are giving predicts how many words the child will know three years later. Now, the next concept is called frequency effects. And this is just like what it sounds like, which is basically more is better for language learning. So the more words the child hears, the, the better for the child's learning. So babies actually pick up language skills much better if you both say an individual word and then you use it in a sentence. So for instance, if you say eyes, look, here's a picture of a child's eyes. Eyes, you see with your eyes, that's better than if you just talk about eyes by saying the word or if you just use it in a sentence. So do both. Say an individual word, then use it in a sentence. This not only helps them learn the initial word, but it also makes it more likely the child will say the word. So for instance, if I say um, a word in German, if I say, Ich habe fünf Jahre Deutsch studieren, aber ich kann nicht sehr gut sprechen. If I say that, you're not likely uh, to just take one of those words and then use it in a sentence or, or say it. But if I just say one word at a time, let's say I say klatschen and then I clap, then you would be more likely to, to use that word. So the same is true with the baby. If the baby hears one word, then the baby hears it in a sentence. Uh, the baby both learns grammar, so you have to speak with proper grammar and the baby can learn where the word begins and ends. Imagine you, you are a newborn baby and you don't even know that individual words exist. You eventually figure that out, but you have to figure out where they begin and where they end. If people are saying one word at a time, then it makes it much easier for you to figure out where they begin and end. If you're also showing the baby's individual words, so if you see the word clap, clap, and then they see what the word means, then it's easier for them to see and hear where the word begins and where it ends. So please uh, do that as well. There's something called intersensory redundant information. All this means is the babies are, are getting the same sensory information, the, the same information, through more than one sensory system. So for instance, uh, when babies are learning any complex task, almost any task, as long as it's not uh, what's called amodal, which is learning pitch, for instance, or color, where you're generally getting the information for pitch with your ear and for color with your eyes, if the baby's learning virtually any other task, then the babies learn more when they're getting redundant sensory information, the same information through a different sensory system. So then if you allow the babies to see the words and hear the words, then the babies have more information than if the babies only hear the words. So you can actually learn language skills visually by seeing the word nose and then hearing the word nose at the same time. According to 
Edelman's theory of neuronal group selection, when babies get multisensory information, there are new connections that are forming in the child's brain from the different parts of the brain. So from the visual cortex to the auditory cortex, if the baby sees and hears things together. And then if you can involve uh, touching the nose or smelling something or some kind of movement, then you're adding more and more sensory systems. So the more sensory systems you can use while you're teaching your baby language skills or other skills, then the better for the baby. One single trial of redundant sensory information can help babies differentiate objects. And two-day-old babies can learn arbitrary audio-visual relationships. So give your baby this multi-sensory information and match it precisely in time. So what I mean by that is right at the moment you point to the word nose, you move your finger from left to right. Nose, nose. And every time you say the word nose, you're either touching your own, own nose, your baby's nose, or you're pointing to a picture touching the person's nose. So try to do that, and then of course use the words in a sentence as well. I highly recommend using an interactive approach. Language learning is better when it's interactive. With very young babies, they can learn a lot passively just by taking in all the information. As they get older and older, around 18 months of age, then the interactive part is getting more and more important. So with younger babies, you can be giving them all the information, but as they get older, they need to be responding. So I highly recommend that you get in the habit of having conversations with your baby. Initially, they won't be actual conversations, they'll be pseudo-conversations. You may ask your baby a question, and your baby is likely not to respond at all if you have a very young baby and they can't talk. But if they make any sound at all, you can repeat the sounds back. So your initial conversation might be started by your baby, because your baby may say, ah. If the baby says, ah, it's probably a random firing of neurons in the brain, and then the sound comes out. The baby's initially probably not trying to say the word, or trying to say, ah, uh, it just happens. But if you repeat that back to the baby, ah, ah, you said, ah, and you get all happy and excited, then according to theories of brain development, that should strengthen the connection that was randomly formed. If it was randomly formed, and it probably was, or it just happened, that should strengthen the connection. Because remember, I said that babies and toddlers actually have thousands of new brain connections forming every second, thousands every second. They can't remember all of those. So if you do something that flags it or shows that that's important, then according to theories of brain development, that strengthens it. So you want to get happy and excited each time you hear your baby make a language-related sound, and then you can repeat it back. This can be the start of a conversation, because in some cases, the baby will then make the sound again. So if that happens, then you just keep going back and forth. As your baby gets more language skills, and as you're doing this more and more with your baby, then the conversations will get longer, and eventually your child will be saying words, and the conversations uh, will will become more like actual conversations. There's research showing that uh, the number of conversational turns, let's say your baby says something, you say something. Your baby says something, you say something. The number of times you go back and forth between 18 and 24 months of age predicts vocabulary 10 years later. So these conversations are very important and the quality of the conversations is also important. So. I got in the habit of asking my, my babies uh, what did they do while daddy was gone. I would ask them that if I, I was studying at Indiana University, if I would go to classes or go to the lab and work, and then I would come home, I would ask them what did they do while I was gone. And I think it's a very good habit to get in and 
even if your child can't respond, I would ask my wife, what did they do? And then I would answer for my babies if they weren't able to answer. So I would say something like, uh, did you go outside and go for a walk? You know, I knew the answer was yes. And then I would say, yes, that's what you did. Did you see the lake? Did you do this? Did you do that? And I would answer the question and I would ask the question. But as they get older, then they can answer the question and then hopefully they'll start asking new questions also and then the conversations will get better and better.